This is Tom, Three Basket Living, where I'm trying to encourage people not to put all your eggs in one basket. And I want to talk about um, squash bug eggs. And I want to share with people right now because I don't know what tomorrow brings. We got a lot of things going on in the world. And um, I'm just walking out here in the garden and picking some tomatoes because I want to use them for demonstration. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, the squash bug eggs. After talking to some people, uh, I'm finding out that they're getting advice on what to do about squash bug eggs. And that's what we're going to talk about because there's something that people are doing out there and they're being advised to do it um, that I want to encourage you not to do. Whatever you do, don't do this. I'm going to be right back after I pick these tomatoes. Alright, so I got my tomatoes here. Uh, if you can see this little bowl here, I got a lot to pick. Probably another 10 pounds of these things. Uh, this is not about my tomatoes. <laughs> this is about the squash bug eggs. So I'm going to go over here and have a seat while I discuss this. Alright, I got a few yellow plum tomatoes out here. Um, just for visualization. I have been hearing and uh, uh, coming across more and more people that have a squash bug problem or infestation in their garden and it seems to be increasing every year for them. Well it turns out on a couple occasions in my community and I'm finding out online that uh, people are listening to some very very bad advice. After I got to looking around online a little bit, I got to, to come across this one channel, this older gentleman down in Alabama. And he addresses how he goes about handling the squash bug eggs when it comes to his gardening practices. Nice guy, seems like a nice guy. But folks, I'm telling you, this gentleman is dead wrong. What he is advising you or other people to do, and they're actually following him, he's got a pretty good sized following. People are listening to him. He's telling people to just go out there and you just rub the squash bug eggs or stink bug eggs off the leaf or stem or whatever and just let them fall to the ground and he's telling them that they won't hatch. Folks, you got to use some common sense and logic here. If you've dealt with squash bug eggs, you know how hard they are or they can be for such a tiny little egg. Why in the world would that be true? Think about it. I gave it some thought and I thought, what well, is it because the eggs somehow draw some sort of energy from the, the plant material, the leaf or the stem? That's not true because I find squash bug eggs on my T posts and cattle panels and they hatch. I find them on a wooden post. They hatch. So that can't be true that they're drawing some sort of energy off the plant. If they get disorientated somehow, would that be considered something that would make those eggs um, not hatch there's no logical reason why that would be true i could take this yellow plum tomato here and drop it on this table and it's not going to bust open it's not going to crack and the same holds true when it comes to the squash bug eggs if you let them fall to the ground they're not going to crack so i wanted to try something and, and do a little experiment myself just in case there was something that I wasn't familiar with or, or unaware of. I went and took this little jar here. I filled it up with some of my garden soil. And then I went around to about four or five leaves, well, three or four leaves, and I took about four or five batches of eggs, anywhere from probably 10 to 40 eggs on, on these patches that I rubbed off and let them fall onto the dirt in this tiny little jar. I gave one spritz or two spritz uh, uh, out of uh, water into that soil just to try to mimic the conditions that um, would be present if you were to let the eggs fall to the ground in your garden. 
I took saran wrap, covered the jar, poked some holes in it, and make sure oxygen could get in there, you know, because that would be the case in your garden. And then I put the jar uh, out there by my shop under the tree canopy to where it had intermittent sun and shade throughout the day. Because that would be the same if you were to rub them off your plants in the garden well the foliage above the plant because the eggs are going to fall at the base of the plant pretty much it's going to be intermittent shade and uh, sun as well so then i went to waiting <clears throat> excuse me so after about day 12 i think it was day 11 or day 12 every day prior to that i went out and i pulled that saran wrap up and i checked with the magnifying glass checking all my eggs on day 12 I found out, and you'll see in this footage that I, that I took of this experiment, you'll find that every one of those eggs, pretty much, I think, hatched. You'll see nymphs all over the jar. If you look at the top of the ram, I try to turn it a little bit so you can see these nano nymphs that emerge out of the eggs that I collected, simulating just letting them fall to the ground. If you do this, and you don't destroy those eggs in some way, shape, form, or fashion, and just let them fall to the ground, that could very well explain if you're one of those people having an increase of squash bug infestation every year, this is why that's happening if you are practicing that method of dealing with the eggs. Folks, I want to tell you, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, that is not true. I don't care how long people have been doing it for, how long they've been around. I don't care if they're your elders. Just because somebody's older does not dictate whether they are putting out something that is truthful. It is not true. And I've proven it to myself just to be sure. So I did some other experiments on on the eggs and this is why because when i went to go looking into this a little bit deeper i got to learn a few things a couple years ago about these squash bug eggs if i take one of these tomatoes here let me draw a little bit here on one i'm going to do this right here i don't know if you can tell but i've taken a permanent marker on this tomato here and on the larger end or fatter end of the tomato I have placed a little ring or circle there. There's a name for this little circle if this tomato was a squash bug egg, and I don't know the scientific name of it. I can't remember. Based on some studies, I believe uh, the study, uh, one of the studies was from Oxford University that I got into. This little area on the squash bug egg is what they've determined to be a weak point of the egg. That very spot on each and one each one of these squash bug eggs is where the embryo of the squash bug, the nano nymph, emerges. Number one. Number two, I don't think they've proven it, but the theory is that that weak point is more porous under a microscope, and they believe that is to allow the gas exchanges from outside to inside the egg, you know, maybe oxygen for the embryo or release gases from the development of the embryo inside the egg to escape. That got me to thinking here because I don't like dealing with the squash bug eggs any more than anybody else does. And I'm going to tell you how I do it and what I believe is the best way, the most effective and most efficient way to deal with them. But in this next experiment that I tried, what I did, I took my, um, my homemade pesticide. It's organic and natural. I did a video on it. Very effective, great stuff. Well, in that pesticide, I utilized Castile soap and orange oil in that recipe. And I mentioned in my previous video about how there's this uh, congealing effect of it. But even if there wasn't, the Castile soap alone, I thought would do the trick. My thinking was that if I sprayed the eggs on the leaf, I just took my spray bottle and sprayed them, that one or two things might happen. One is that orange oil will penetrate through the weak point of that egg and therefore kill the embryo. And if not, the Castile soap, once it dries, you know, once the water uh, evaporates from the mixture and the Castile soap and orange oil are left behind on the egg, that maybe it would seal that little weak point or portal of the squash bug egg cut off the oxygen and the embryo die and not hatch well i did this experiment for about three weeks and i marked leaves in which i sprayed 
uh, uh, the eggs. And I was going ahead and spraying other eggs as well, thinking this has got to work. <laughs> well, it turns out, again, about 10, 11, 12 days later, all these eggs that I was spraying were starting to hatch. So it, that didn't work. So that just left me to the conclusion that I'm just going to keep doing what I've always been doing because that's the most effective and efficient way to go about it. Because even if the spraying of the eggs would have worked, what I found out is that I couldn't keep track of what eggs I sprayed and what eggs I haven't. So therefore, I was spraying eggs probably two or three times. And, and because of my uh, pesticide, just like anything, too much of a good thing can have a negative effect. It started burn, making burn spots in the foliage of my plants. So it wouldn't have been a very... Uh, effective way because how are you going to keep track of what eggs you you spray and don't maybe if it would have worked I could have sprayed them and then rub the eggs off and let them fall to the ground or something I don't know but it was a failed experiment and, and, and it didn't work so there's a few options that you have obviously and you probably already heard them if you're not doing it yourself Number one is you could take a glass uh, or a can of soapy water and you can go to all these squash bug eggs and rub them off into that soapy water. You know people do that. I don't like that method, although I think it works, but there's some things you have to take into consideration. Number one is where you're going to dispose of those eggs. You can't just take that soapy water. Based on my experiment of trying to seal off that little hatched area, um, you just can't take that water and go throw it in the woods because those eggs are going to hatch or throw it in your compost pile. You don't want to do that because more than likely those eggs are going to hatch anyway. And if you don't have a predatorial insect that happens to come across that nymph or that egg, it's going to continue to develop and grow and start congregating with other squash bugs. Um, so you need to dispose of that properly. Number two is that ties up hands. You got to have one hand holding that glass or can of soapy water to, to go around and try to finagle around these leaves, either on top or underneath or around the stems and try to get those eggs in that soapy water. I like having my hands free. Then on top of that, if you happen to set that thing down on the ground and knock it over, or you happen to trip or something in your garden and you've got hundreds or maybe thousands of eggs in that soapy water, you go to spilling that, good luck on retrieving those eggs. You're going to have to get a shovel or something and, and try to clean that up as best as you can. Otherwise, all those eggs are more than likely going to hatch based on my experiments. So I don't like that method. Another method is tape. You've seen people take tape. They take it in reverse direction with the sticky side of the tape out uh, on your fingers or your hands and you go around to these leaves and, and, and you just you take the tape, the sticky side of the tape, and you pull up on the, the eggs and the eggs will come with the tape if it's a good tape. Well, that tape starts to fill up. And then once it fills up, you got to readjust it and reposition it so you can continue pulling eggs off the leaves. I don't like that method because, it again, it ties up my hands. Uh, I have to finagle with tape. I'm using another resource tape, uh, a good tape with a sticky glue on it. That's extra cost. And then you got to dispose of those properly. You need to throw that in a burn barrel or something like that. You don't want to throw that into your garbage can in your shop or your house or something because those eggs it's likely that those eggs are going to hatch as well. And if you're not aware of it, people have problems with squash bugs and stink bug infestations in their homes. So you don't want those eggs anywhere around where they can hatch and they happen to make it off that sticky tape or something like that, and then you can have problems that way. So the best way to do it, in my opinion, based on my experiment and my experience through the years, is just to go and crush them. People are familiar with that. Uh, you just go in there. If this was a leaf, this table here, and I got a patch of eggs, I, got, I take my fingers and I just start squashing them. That gets a little tiresome on your fingers because you got to give pretty good pressure on those eggs to get those things to pop. You need them to pop in order to, to make sure that they're not going to hatch or survive. And because of your... Um, the, the pads on your fingertips here, you know, they give. So that's why you got to press so hard to get them things to pop. It starts to wear your fingers and thumb out. My suggestion is 
is what I do is I take the back side of my thumbs, my thumbnails, one underneath the leaf, one on top of the leaf on the eggs or something, and I just roll them. You just, you don't have to press that daggum hard. You just put a little pressure on it because you got two hard surfaces against one another. They pop like bubble wrap. It's almost kind of satisfying to hear them and feel them pop between your fingers because you don't get much opportunity to get this many squash bugs if these were eggs all centrally located can't move can't do anything and you just eliminate anywhere 10 20 40 uh, squash bugs right there on the spot and that's the best way and most efficient way to do it without any extra materials without having to worry about how you're going to dispose of the eggs or tripping and falling and spilling those eggs and they end up surviving now if you're concerned about putting a hole in the leaf or ripping the leaf. Don't get over, overly concerned about that. You know, people uh, have an argument about using tape, how it can rip the leaf and stuff like that uh, as well. You're not gonna cause any more damage than any other bug putting a hole in that leaf um, by smashing these squash bug eggs. Just don't go rubbing those eggs off and put, letting them fall to the ground and expecting them things not to hatch. They like the ground. They like getting under leaves. They like getting under wood chips. That's where they overwinter. Bury themselves if you got soft enough soil. They're going to dig down and overwinter. And then you're really going to have a problem the following year. So if you've been doing that, this may be one of the reasons why you're having an increase in population year after year by taking that bad advice. Folks, it doesn't work, but you have to deal with the eggs to a certain extent. The only other thing you can do is you can let them hatch. Take that uh, natural organic uh, pesticide that I make, but you better be sure to get out there just about every day, every other day, and, and be ready to uh, squirt them uh, nymphs. That's the only other way I know to go about doing it, and that's a risky proposition there. Because if you happen to have to go out of town or something for a few days, and you just let all them things go to hatching on their own, you're going to have a real issue and a problem. But if you use your common sense and logic, okay, that you've been gifted with, you'll realize just rubbing those eggs off and letting them fall to the ground is not going to render that egg ineffective or uh, inert. It's going to hatch. So pass that along to your neighbors. Find out if they're doing that because that could have an impact on you in trying to be self-sustainable and um, protect your garden from these garden pests. Nice. If you found anything edifying and beneficial in this video, all I ask you to do is pass on the information. Share it with your family, your friends. Find out if they're practicing that bad advice. This may explain why we're having such an increase of squash bugs year after year in the United States across the country. So this could be one of the reasons why. So if you're doing that, I'm going to recommend that you stop doing it and uh, recommend to other people that they not do it as well because it could impact your growing abilities and your uh, infestations that you might be having in your area. Folks, have a nice day. Share the information. May all your branches become full of fruit, and I'll see you next time. Whoa.